Hi everyone, welcome to Jensen DIY. Well, today we're gonna to be working on my 92 Geo Tracker again. I'm gonna be doing the rear brake drum shoes. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so here's your drum. So there's four nuts here we need to undo to get this uh, drum off. So. Let's crack them all loose. lock washer underneath as well. Just put them in your tray, you don't want to lose them. These little magnetic trays are great for this kind of stuff. Yeah, a lot of times these are corroded on. Um, I like to use a rubber mallet, and then if you can't get it with that, then you can use a steel one. But just give it a whack here and there. That might have done it. That did it right there. So it doesn't take much, most of the time. So there it comes. Okay. Lots of brake dust in there. Oh, that looks bad. Wow, yeah. There's, there's brake fluid down in the drum. Brake fluid all in here. This is just, just gross. Now, if you're not replacing the drums, then you wanna you know, make sure you clean out in here real good. These actually look in pretty nice shape inside here. There's a number in here and that gives you the distance from here to here. And if the distance is over that, then you need to replace the drums. That says 231. So I'm assuming that's uh, millimeters, 231 millimeters, 23 centimeters. Okay, and that's the distance from here to here. Okay, so um, if it's that measurement or more, then you would need to change these. I'll start at 10 centimeters right here and go across and it looks like so there's 10 centimeters 100 millimeters 200 millimeters or 20 centimeters so 200 210 220 so we're about 220 millimeters right now so this is got plenty of room for wear left. If I start there and go to the 231, that would take me just about to the outside edge of this. So there's plenty of room for wear. But you can see here, this is not looking too good. This is just covered. And you can see it's flaking off here. Well, these are the shoes I got for it. Just ordered them on Amazon. Okay, so we got our e-brake cable coming this way and through down in here. Here's a spring. Here's your brake cylinder with the fluid in there. You push the brake. This pushes out and pushes the brake pads onto the drum. So the e-brake is off right now. I have a block in front of the front tires. So now we're going to remove these springs to get these brake shoes out of here. If yours is a different setup than this, you want to probably take some pictures as you're doing this so you remember how it goes back together. Just used a flathead screwdriver, pushed up on that. So there's one spring. Okay, so you want to set that aside and remember that goes on top. And then there's another spring down at the bottom here. go okay so you've got these two retaining clips one here and one here you want to kind of hold that in place with a screwdriver and you want to twist this pin so that it lines up with the, the groove okay twist that there now this clip will come off and you've got your other spring down here your emergency brake cable spring that needs to be undone 
and another spring up top here. Same on the other side, get the screwdriver in there to hold it in place. You want to twist that pin so that pops off. A little different clip on this side. There's the pins. Yeah, and then the brake shoes go into the end of the wheel cylinder right here and here. So you want to pry that out of there. out there and there's one shoe off okay. and there comes the rest there's the adjuster and here's your e-brake that is attached there with a c-clip so we want to get that c-clip okay there's the c-clip okay and then that just slides out and there's your other shoe. Okay, so I'm gonna look into getting some new wheel cylinders. There's fluid coming out of here and they look old, so. Okay, so for the wheel cylinder, there's two 10 mil bolts in behind that hold this on. Uh, one I found I need an extension for and the other one I don't. And then there's two brake lines. So, and this is the rear passenger side of the vehicle. Okay, so I've undone these two. And then I'm gonna, I've got a container down here to catch any brake fluid. And I'm gonna put the new wheel, wheel cylinder on now. So I'm gonna remove the two bolts that hold this wheel cylinder on. There's one, two, and there's my new wheel cylinder. I'll make sure those bolts fit. Yeah, they fit. And then these little plugs come out. And that's where your brake lines attach. So here's where those two bolts attached, one, two. And now I'm gonna undo these two brake lines with a 10 mil box end wrench. I got one off, but the other one is stripping and it's not wanting to come off, so. I'm gonna put some channel locks on it and hope I can get it. There we go, I think I got it. I'm really glad that came undone. I didn't wanna replace the brake lines. They still look in good shape. Okay, so there it is. That's the old one definitely need to be replaced. Now we want to clean around here. Careful not to get any debris in those brake lines. Make sure those brake lines look nice and clean on the end. Now we're going to take our new wheel cylinder a new wheel cylinder through. I want to get those brake lines started. Okay, I got the bottom one going in good. The one that was stripped, so that's good. Hey, being careful not to cross thread. I'm trying to get this top one started. It's being stubborn. Put a little bend on it to try and straighten it out. Okay, there we go. That got it started.
Okay, I got those both snugged up. Now I'm going to get these two uh, fastener bolts on there. Got the new brake cylinder on and the brake line done up with the bleeder valve above. Now I'm about to put the new shoes in and reassemble it all with the emergency brake. A little pin fits through there. Take the pin, put it through. Twist that pin. Holds it on there. Okay, here we go. Pins are in place, twisted so that they're not lined up with the groove anymore. This part of the shoe is into the wheel cylinder. This part's into the wheel cylinder. Same at the bottom. There's a little groove it fits into. So those shoes are set where they need to be. Now we're going to take this piece here. That goes up. There's a groove in the e-brake piece here. That groove fits on there. And then this part fits into that groove there. No, I should have put this in first. So we need to take this off. Okay, so there it all is back together. This took over an hour. I had to fight with this. I used a flathead screwdriver and some um, vice grips, channel lock pliers, needle nose pliers to get all these springs back. A real pain. So there's the bleeder there on the back of the wheel cylinder. You want to put your tube right on there. So I had my wife help me bleed those brakes. I had her push the brakes in and I had this tube on that bleeder with the bleeder valve slightly loosened. I had her push in on the brake pedal and hold it in and fluid would come out of here into a container. And then she held that brake pedal in and I tightened the bleeder back up. Then she let the pedal out. Then I loosened it again and got her to push that pedal in and the fluid came out and I could see air bubbles in it. And then I tightened it up and she let her foot off the pedal again. And we repeated that process, I'm gonna say a dozen times until I didn't see any air bubbles coming through in that fluid. And while I was doing that, I made sure that the brake fluid reservoir was full with the lid off. And that way that fluid would get sucked through and, and no air would be allowed in because the reservoir was full, okay? So every time she pushed on that brake pedal, it would suck a little bit more fluid in and the fluid would go through the brake lines. But because she held that pedal in, no air was allowed to get sucked into the lines. That's why I would tighten up the bleeder. Then she could let off the pedal. And then once there were no bubbles, I tightened it up, put the cap back on, she let her foot off and then we just pumped the brakes until they became firm. I test drove it and wow, what a difference. The brakes have never worked so well. It was a few day process because I had to get more parts, the, the wheel cylinders and that. But uh, all in all, it turned out well. You know, It's nice when you can do things yourself because uh, you get to know the vehicle better. That way if you're out in the middle of nowhere, um, you got a much better idea if something goes wrong um, as to how to fix it. All right. Okay. Well, I appreciate you watching and uh, I hope uh, this video has helped you in some way. Good luck with your projects and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.